everybody. Welcome back. Today I am back at my YouTube card challenge, Altered Playing Cards, and I'm working on cards number 14, 15, and 16. Not going as fast as I would like, but you know, I'm doing a lot of other stuff in between, and we had the holidays, and so that's where I'm at. So come on along, and I'll probably speed you through a lot of this, but thought I would share. Thanks for being here. So once again, I am starting with some playing cards. This is from a um, probably 1980 set of old maid cards. So I just pulled three out and I'm going to cover each one with a coat of gesso just to get more of a st uh, sticky ground, not sticky, but you know, so stuff sticks to it, get a ground on them and then kind of decide what I'm going to do because I have really no idea at this point. And then this is the backs of the cards. So I just grabbed some carbon black in fluid acrylic and I'm just going to scumble some paint on the backs of the cards. And then I just have some of that gesso left in my brush. I'm just going to wipe most of it out and just dry brush some gesso onto the back side of the cards just to give some texture to the backs. So back to the fronts, and I decided to stick each of these cards in an embossing folder and run it through my sidekick. So the embossing folder is just some gears. I think you can see the embossing. So they're embossed on the front and debossed on the back. So I did each one in the same embossing folder. Now I have um, Deco Art Gleams paint in copper. This is really old. I don't know if they even sell it anymore, but it's still good. So I'm going to try to get a different look on each one of these cards using different paint techniques. So this one, I'm just laying down the copper paint which is really nice. It's really super creamy and it has really good coverage. Like I said, I don't know if this actual type is still out there, but I'm sure there's copper paint in a lot of the craft paint lines. It's hard to hold on to the cards while you're painting and not get finger marks in it. For the next one, I am using this Target brand acrylic paint in Robin's Egg. These are really nice paints, you guys, if you haven't tried them. They're super inexpensive. It's just a craft paint, but they come in a lot of really pretty colors, and I really like them. So this is Robin's Egg, and I'm just laying down the color on this one, too.
And for the last one, I have Distress Paint in Crushed Olives. I was hoping to get some water spots on this. Sometimes I have good luck with it and sometimes I don't. It may have been because of the embossing. I'm not sure, but I didn't really get a whole lot of spots. So I just covered the whole card with a moderate layer of paint. I did have to push down with the applicator to get the paint down in the embossing a bit. So I might have had maybe too much paint on it. I don't know. Then I just dipped my fingers in my water basin and just spritzed the water off my fingers onto the card. And waited a few minutes. And while I was waiting, I just cleaned that. I'm trying to keep my mat clean so that I don't get a lot of paint on the backs of these cards. So I'm just, I'm cutting a lot of it out, but after each step, I'm just wiping the mat off. Also, in between each step, I am drying the cards, but I cut that out too. So then after a few seconds, I laid the paper towel down to lift the water. So I got a few little spots sprinkled some more water and tried it again. It's okay, I guess. I think it was just because the paint application was kind of heavy. So then I have some archival ink in potting soil and I'm just hitting the embossing on that copper card just to bring the uh, texture forward more. I really like the way that looks with the brown on top of the copper. I think it's really pretty. And then just kind of hit the edges with it too. And then I just dried the ink off really well. And I thought, wonder if my simple leaf would lay down any gold on this. It's not sticky really at all, so I wasn't sure if it would work or not. But I figured it's worth a try. <laughs> so I just laid it down and really rubbed hard, hoping that maybe there were just some little areas of paint that or ink that would still pick up this um, gold leaf. So I got a few little spots, so I was encouraged and just kept at it until I got it the way I liked it. Once I got all the gold foil on that I could get to stick on, I went back over the top of it again with that potting soil archival ink just to bring the um, texture up a little bit more. And where I hit the gold foil with the ink, it turned a really even prettier, more coppery color. So I really like the way this one turned out. So moving on, I'm working on the card that I had the Distress Oxide paint on, and I'm just going to add a really thin, uneven layer of modeling paste. And what that is doing is just bringing the texture of the embossing back up so that it can be seen better. There were a few places where the paint got lifted almost back to the um, 
the illustration that was on the face of the card so I just put the modeling paste on heavier in those areas because I know I'm still going to put stuff on top of this so I wasn't too worried about it. And for the last card, I thought I would try and see if I could get some crackle going on top of the embossing. This Josanya's Crackle Medium that I have is super old, and the lid was clogged up, so I had to stop and clear that out. So I got that going again and put a liberal, or liberal amount onto the card as is suggested on the instructions on the bottle. And I've used this for years and it usually works really well, but I really didn't get any crackles. Um, I did dry it with the heat tool and I have a feeling that that may be part of the reason why. It might also be the, the type of paint that's that Target craft paint. So it may have been the paint, who knows. But anyway, I didn't get any crackles and as I was using the heat tool and realizing that I wasn't going to get any crackles. I just held the tool in the same spot until the medium bubbled up just to try to get some kind of texture going because I knew I wasn't going to get crackles. So once it was good and dry, I grabbed some quinacridone red fluid acrylic and I thought that color would look really pretty on this robin robin egg color and so I just smeared it all over and down into the embossing with my finger and you guys know me and my fingers God's art tools they're the best I really like the way it looks I was glad I did that and then I just Kind of lifted some here and there just to kind of get a vintage grungy look going just using a baby wipe cleaning off that mat again and then i just dried this one off so here's where we are so far that's my favorite right there. That one's pretty cool too. These remind me of like old vintage wallpaper. Not that one, but the other two do. I like this one too. So I'm not sure where I'm going with them, but so far so good. So I just flipped those over and took my jet black archival ink and just ran it across the backs of the cards adjust to bring that debossed image of the gears up to the top. And that's all I'm doing on the back. I like it. I'm just going to leave those alone. So I dried them all off and watching this back I realized I just lied to you. I didn't leave them alone. <laughs> I decided to put a little bit of the paint color that was on the front of each card onto the back. I just scribbled some on with my fingers onto the backs of the cards. So that's what I'm doing here. And I got the green one and the blue one mixed up, which is fine. I put the green on the blue and the blue on the green. I still like them. So I got my crocodile out to put the eyelets in and got this bright idea that I would thread some thin copper wire here and there through that copper card. So I just took the small punch end of my crocodile and punched holes in the center of most of those gears and just started messing around with 
the wire and twisting it and turning it and threading it back and forth through the holes just to get, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a circuit board or something like that. So I'm just going to speed this up. So now I have another archival ink in a deep turquoise color. It's garden something or other. And I just went across the card and then also down this old kind of grungy piece of lace just to bring the colors together. And then I'm going to glue the lace to the card. And just pulled a image out of my stash and ripped a lady's hat. I just wanted her face. Um, and I colored her with some aged paper, I think it's called, of the archival ink. And then just added her to the card. She was just kind of that sepia, kind of brown and white. And she didn't really go that great with the card. So the aged paper... It's kind of a green colored ink that just brought her into my colorway a little bit better. And I just put her down on the card with some matte medium. And I have some Jane Davenport stickers. And I'm just looking to see if I can find something in those stickers that might just finish this card off. And I found one. And it just says, follow your dreams. So she looks kind of like a floating head in a dream. <laughs> so, And then I just added some of that aged paper green ink just to make it look less white look like it goes with the card a little bit better and I'm calling that one done so for the last one I just grabbed uh, Tim Holtz paper dolls and my sepia archival ink and I'm just going to brown them up a little bit so they match the card a little better and then I'll just glue them down with that Elmer's glue, that works pretty good. It's a paper and fabric glue. My daughter bought it for something. And then she said she didn't need it anymore, so she gave it to me. And that's another one of those little Jane Davenport stickers, that little like ribbony looking piece that I just stuck on the edge there. So I went over that with the sepia ink and went all around the edges with it too. So, oh, and then I just hit that ribbon part with it grabbed the ink kind of in an odd way so I just liquefied it a little bit while it was wet and smeared it around a little bit and then just glued the girls down And then I just grabbed my black Stabilo pencil and I just went around the right side of the girls and underneath them with a little bit of the pencil and activated it to get a little bit of a shadow and give them something to stand on so they didn't look like they were just floating in midair.
And then I have a fine liner bottle with carbon black fluid acrylic in it. And I decided to just put some scribble writing um, going up the card on that right side next to that ribbon sticker. And I think that just finished it off just nicely. So that's it. Cards 14, 15, and 16 are done. And on my chain of altered playing cards. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And leave me a comment and let me know which of these cards you like the best. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.